So in just the same way as I did with number 11, I'm gonna look at this and I'm gonna say, oh, what that's code for is two different things at the same time because mathematicians are lazy and we don't wanna to have to write the two cases every single time. We're like, let's just agree that this is what it will mean. However, when you've got that, you can't really, there's no collection of like terms that can happen because the brackets are in the way. So therefore we have to get rid of the absolute value signs so that it's just normal algebra and then we can simplify. And I'm gonna do the same thing here. So when I break it apart into two, I'm going to say, okay, sometimes the absolute value of x is just x. Um, this plus x is unchanged, okay? My question is, when is the absolute value of x just x? And it is if x is positive, right? In this case, there's no discontinuities because I'm not dividing by anything like I was over here. So in fact, you can put in any merry value of x that you like and you'll never run into problems like we did over here. Okay? So therefore, I can actually include the boundary there. I could have included it here too, but it doesn't matter. Okay? So if for the, for the little the equal sign yes. below the, yep. the grid and stuff, is, do you only need to include on one? Um, well, so this is, this is a weird thing. So because um, zero is neither positive nor negative, if you put a plus sign or a minus sign on it, it, it doesn't matter. Yeah. So it's actually true for both at the same time, which is kind of strange. Um, it's a little weird though to say um, uh, that something is, is two different things even for the same value. So by convention, we only put it on one because it's just weird to yeah. say, I'm both at the same time. Yeah. So yeah, that's right. We, um, we don't mind quantum superposition, but we just, it's just too confusing <laughs> at this point, right? Too early for that stuff. Now, the absolute value of x is just x for this, but alternatively, it will be negative x plus x, plus x if x is less than zero, okay? So I've just sort of separated this into its two halves. And now I can actually simplify. So here, x plus x, I know what that is. And again, that has a domain attached to it. Whereas minus x plus x is equal to something else in this domain. Is that okay? Yeah. yeah. So now I'm ready to draw the thing, right? So I've got a set of axes. Wait, so why don't you put the is x is less or equal to zero? Like yeah, so this is the thing I was mentioning to, um, to Russell just now. Oh, to be honest, no, it's fine. Uh, it's a bit weird because I can actually do this or this. It doesn't actually matter because if x equals zero, uh, it's neither positive nor negative. So it can actually sit on either of these things. Another way you can think about it is like this. Uh, the absolute value of zero. Should I define it as plus zero or should I define it as minus zero? And the answer is, I don't care. Like either of those is still zero. Okay, so therefore it's like, oh, which, you know, usually uh, I have to decide which branch I'm in, but zero is that weird special guy that doesn't care which one you decide, you both end up at the same value. So for that reason, you can put it on either. Um, I see it more frequently on this one, but it literally doesn't matter. Um, so I'm just gonna choose one, okay? Should we draw it? Yeah. yeah. So again, just like before, what I have to think about is, uh, this is called a piecemeal function. So it's one function, y equals something, but at sometimes it's equal to this and sometimes it's equal to that, okay? So again, I'll go from left to right. Um, for the negative values of x, I have to draw y equals zero. Well, that's the x-axis, isn't it? y equals zero is the x-axis. So therefore, I should have some arrows up here. Therefore, on the left-hand side, I'm just gonna draw y equals zero. That's it, y equals zero if x is less than zero. Mm -hmm. So these are all my negative values of x, because that's the x-axis after all, it's the y-axis. So that part of the graph is done. Then I say, all right, once I, once I switch over, I turn into this new graph, 2x. So 2x is a bit steep, so I'm going to draw it upwards like that. That's y equals 2x, and that's it. If I wanted to be a little more precise about it, I would say, you know how over here, oh, you drew I had to make a point about, well, what happens when you change from one to the other? That, that matters sometimes. In this case, it actually doesn't matter, because look, it looks continuous, doesn't it? It is continuous, it doesn't have a break or anything like that, like that. But if you want to be like really, you know, certain about it, 
and just chuck a full circle there. Because at x equals zero, um, I do have a value unlike over there. So, little little point there, right? Is it in a piecewise function? No, yeah, right? piecemeal, piece piecewise. Yeah. Yeah. Is it um? Is it called like a critical point? Or? Um. So the the word, the phrase critical point is used um in a variety of different contexts, and unfortunately, I've seen it used lots of different times to mean different things. So some people call that a critical point, mm. and other people will call a critical point um what we. Wait, so things it? like um, sorry, sorry. Uh, I'll just finish this. So things like um, that. Yeah. Later on, we're going to learn about calculus. We call that a stationary point. Um, critical is like as a word in English, just means important, yeah. right? And it's like, oh, that's pretty important to that where where it turns around. Um, other people will say the points of inflection, which they don't turn around, but they kind of like have a bit of a bend. Yeah. Some people call that a critical point, and it's like, what? <laughs> which is it, right? So therefore, I um. I don't tend to call it that because it's too ambiguous. Yeah, okay. because in my yeah. tutoring teaching is like, if you do like a piece wise function yep. graph, yep. Um, you find a critical point and then you can just plot from there. So yeah, that's right. Like so in other words, what they're saying is, okay, tell me where it switches, switches over from one to the other. That's the important point. And then you just look to the left, you look to the right. And sometimes a graph will have more than one important point. Sometimes it will change multiple times. Um, and I, we may get to some examples of that this morning. Oh, oh no, yeah. no, I was just asking what, how many critical points. Yeah, yeah, no, that's fine. So, um, like I said, I, I'm, not, I'm not fond of the word because there's not much agreement um, as to what it means among textbooks, among teachers, etc. So, I just try to stick clear of it. Okay. So, how do you feel about that question? Is that right? Um, now, I won't, I won't graph it. However, the second part of it only changed the sign. Uh, the operation rather between them and you can see it would carry on in much the same way except that these would be minus signs which would mean x minus x that's going to become zero would just flip it would flip that's exactly right uh, and this minus x minus x would be minus 2x okay so if i was drawing this version of the graph then uh the flipping is actually, you've got to be careful. Look at the kind of flipping that you've got. I need another color. Where is this graph, this new one that I've adjusted, where is it y equals zero? In what domain? If x is greater, so it'd be on the other yeah, side. Yeah, so it's this side over here. So I'm drawing that guy over there. And where is y equals minus 2x? x well, less than it's x is less than zero. Now, what does that look like? Yeah. This, this is minus 2x, isn't it? See, it's yeah. dropping down. So y equals minus 2x, y equals 0. So it's actually going to flip horizontally, yeah. which is a little bit weird, but that's what the algebra tells me. Yeah. Okay.